The Galaxy S8 without a doubt is one of the best devices on the market right now, but as with any smartphone, it's not perfect. Welcome back to Byte Review. Here's five ways I think the S8 could have been even better. I just want to preface this by saying I think the Galaxy S8 is stunning, so much so that I actually switched over from my iPhone 7 Plus, so don't take this video as a hater's guide because that's not it. This is more of a list of my frustrations with the device since I've been using it. Let's start off with the biggest one, and it seems it's not just me who finds Samsung's Bixby to be the worst part of the S8. Set up as a personal assistant, Bixby was touted as a phone companion that could pretty much do anything for you, but what we got was a half-cooked, still in alpha piece of software that felt more like bloatware. Its main iteration is a home screen that takes the place of Google Now on the left side of the S8. This screen contains a flow of information cards that you can customise to a degree. Samsung seems to prefer you using their services rather than Google's, which is annoying. Bixby has some other features based around reminders and the vision aspect, which is slightly interesting but nothing amazing. One of the biggest omissions from Samsung was a lack of voice control in Bixby, which kind of goes hand in hand with being a personal assistant. Samsung has promised it's on the way, but I still find it hard to believe they would launch it without that aspect. But the worst part of all of this? Samsung decided that it's good enough for its own hardware button. Disgusting. Look, I get it, putting Bixby into your most popular product is a great way to increase, or force if you will, adoption. But with Google Assistant on the actual device and no voice support at launch, I can't help but feel Samsung should have just waited a year to perfect Bixby before imposing it upon us. I feel like I don't even have to mention why it's bad at this point, but hey, as we're here, the fingerprint scanner on the S8 is just in a god awful place. It's hard to detect, it's easy to smudge the camera lens, and you always have to adjust your grip to get at it. Why Samsung thought putting it there was a good idea, I don't think we'll ever know, especially when every other back-mounted print scanner is in the middle, which arguably is the best place to put it. Samsung did put in a retina scanner and a face scanner into the S8, but I'm not a big fan of oogling my phone until it unlocks. Plus it takes slightly longer too. Do you do this a lot with your current phone? Then that isn't going to change with the S8. The speaker is small, not massively loud and doesn't sound massively great. I know with this sort of design that speakers always tend to take a back seat and I'm generally okay with that. I'd rather a super nice fit and finish rather than a big bezel for some better speakers, but I do wish that Samsung had upped the game a little bit here. The iPhone 7 had a good way by pushing the audio not just through the bottom of the phone but also through the earpiece, and I feel Samsung could have implemented a similar design for the S8. Unfortunately, we're stuck with the downwards facing speaker at the bottom of the phone that sounds, well, as good as it can. But hey, got to at least be thankful for that headphone jack, right? Battery life on the S8 has been the biggest letdown for me personally. Coming over from the iPhone 7 Plus, which was an absolute beast in terms of battery life, it's been a difficult time to adjust. To really gauge battery though, you have to use the phone yourself, so it's all subjective to the user, but over the two-ish months I've owned the Galaxy S8, I'm either getting to the end of the day with around under 10%, or I'm charging it before the day is out. Just to mention, I don't game on my phone, and outside of work emails, I wouldn't say I use it any more than anyone else. So the phone is never usually under a really heavy load, I do make use of the screen's full 2K quality and automatic brightness, so that might take a little bit of a toll, but it's nothing major. I know that batteries have been a sore subject for Samsung recently, so I can understand why they perhaps didn't put a bigger battery in for the S8. Even so, I struggle to get over 2.5 hours of screen on time. I'll be the first to admit this is getting really nitpicky now, but I think Samsung software is still worth talking about. The first of my frustrations with it is from the bundled and repeating apps. No, I don't want to use the Samsung internet browser when Chrome is here. No, I don't want to use the Samsung gallery. No, I don't want two app stores. And no, I don't like having two email clients. Seeing repeated apps in your drawer is really annoying and you can't uninstall them either. But in fairness to Samsung, you can disable them in the settings so they don't show up. Secondly, TouchWiz. Don't get me wrong, this is still the very best TouchWiz there has ever been and it feels like a completely modern UI with all the bells and whistles you could possibly want, but I'm still not sold on it. I don't mind UI shakeups, but when you come to the S8 from using a Pixel or an iPhone 7, you can't help but feel the interface lacks speed and finesse. 
There's plenty of power in here, but I always feel like TouchWiz slows me down. Whether it's longer animations or choppy frame rates here and there, it always pushes me to switch to a different launcher to offset some of those issues. So there's my top 5 ways I think the S8 could have been better. Let me know if you agree with my list, or tell me I'm completely wrong in the comments below. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you all in the next one.